Hi and welcome to my second video in the series about blood and transport system and today we're going to be looking at vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So within exercise we need to redirect blood um, to different areas of the body and so the way in which we can do this is we can either vasodilate which means to open or to vasoconstrict um, certain arterioles and what this can do is this can either stop blood in the case of vasoconstrict or to allow blood vasodilate to get to certain areas of the body and obviously when you're exercising um, the blood supply needs to be changed to different areas and so therefore this mechanism of being able to move blood into different areas or to stop it going to others means that you can meet the demands of the exercise. So this diagram illustrates the difference between the blood flow changes during exercise. So this is at rest and this is your value for um, exercise and you can see straight away um, that the amount of blood going to different areas has increased massively and so it's nearly trebled or in fact it probably has just about trebled um, so 500, uh, 5,800 millilitres per minute and nearly 18,000 millilitres per minute um, what you'll notice here is, is several parts so if we explain each part here so with the brain um, the amount of blood going to the brain remains constant the reason for that is the brain needs a constant supply of glucose and oxygen to have the CO2 removed so it can function properly uh, and so the blood supply to the brain regardless of exercise never changes. The heart has an increase in the amount of um, blood flowing to it so the reason for that is obvious the heart is contracting more during exercise and therefore it may, needs a greater supply of glucose and oxygen. The skeletal muscles increase massively um, so in the order of six to seven times um, the increase goes up by. The skin increases the amount of blood that flows to it and the reason for that is, is you can cool down by sending the blood to the surface of the skin it enables more of the heat to radiate and to convect and conduct away from you and so therefore it can cool you down. Um, the kidney the amount of blood reduces to there um, and so the process of producing urine or the process of particularly to do with um, this one as well, the abdomen, so to do with digestion and excretion, that slows down during exercise because it's all being redirected to the muscles. Um, and to the other areas of the body you have a, a reduction again because that blood is being redirected um, to the skeletal muscles and to the skin and to the heart, which require more oxygen and glucose to respire. And so the two methods to cause the redirection of blood, one is vasoconstriction, that means to reduce the flow of blood into the capillaries by action of the sympathetic nerves, and vasodilation, increasing the flow of blood into the capillaries. And it's specifically the arterioles are the ones that contract and that cause this. And so this is why they have the smooth muscle material, or big amounts of the smooth muscle material found within the walls of the arterioles to do this. So that smooth muscle can contract, and therefore it can constrict the blood flow or it can relax and therefore dilate and allow more blood flow to that area. If you look at the diagrams here, it shows under vasodilation and so the lumen size is bigger. Under vasoconstriction, it shows it being much, much smaller and so that smooth muscle has contracted. Um, and so we can think of vasoconstriction happening to the um, arterial surrounding the kidney or around the abdomen. Vasodilation would occur to the blood vessels that supply the skeletal muscles and also um, the blood vessels that supply to the skin, which will enable you to cool down. And so when you exercise, you know more blood or more blood flows to the surface of the skin and therefore it enables you to cool down, which is why that you see the distinct, you know, when you run around for a long period of time, um, you appear red um, because lots of the blood is moving to the capillaries near the surface of the skin. Um, when you're cold, um, the blood moves selectively towards the organs, towards your vital organs to promote survival, and therefore you appear blue. Um, well, if you appear blue, you're probably in trouble, but essentially you appear more pale um, if you're colder. If you join me on the next video, we'll be looking at blood velocities and blood pressure.